Uh, you're coming to us from Brazil. You haven't been back to the United States since these first stories were published last summer, uh, but you've uh, hinted that you're going to come back this spring. Uh, and I want to bring that up because there's been claims in recent days from some government officials that they might hold you accountable and might try to, to prosecute you in some way. Let's play the uh, exchange between the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, and the FBI director, James Comey, from earlier this week. There have been discussions about uh, selling of access to this material uh, to both newspaper outlets and other places. Uh, Mr. Comey, to the best of your knowledge, is fencing stolen material, is that a crime? Uh, yes, it is. And it would be the selling the access of classified material that is stolen from the United States government, is, would that be a crime? It would be. Uh, it, it, it's an issue that can be complicated if it involves a news gathering, a news promulgation function, but in general, uh, fencing or selling stolen property is a crime. Glenn, your blood must boil when you hear that. What was your reaction to that? What do you think they're trying to do by saying those kind of things? Extraordinary aspects to that attempt by Mike Rogers to suggest that journalists such as myself are engaged in criminal conduct or selling documents and the like. The first is that he's not only lying, and he is lying, but he not only is lying, but he knows that he's lying. Um, you know, this is what Mike Rogers is notorious for in Washington, is literally just making things up and smearing political opponents and journalists he doesn't like. He recently did it when he said that there was uh, indications that Edward Snowden was working with Russian intelligence, and every major newspaper in the country said not only is there no evidence of that, but that investigators have said it's not the case, that he acted alone. Um, but I defy Mike Rogers, if he wants to make that accusation, to come forward and present actual evidence that any journalist has stolen, has sold documents or stolen material or engaged in um, any kind of criminality. He has no evidence. He's just making things up. But the second extraordinary aspect of it is that what he's talking about, that process has always in the United States been called journalism, where you go to media organizations when you have something to report, you get paid for your reporting, and then you report it what the public should know. What this is is nothing less than an attempt to criminalize journalism, like all petty tyrants try to do when reporters and other journalists expose that which they want to hide. And I don't think anybody should mistake what this is really about. And yet every time we talk, every time you're on television, people on Twitter call you a traitor. What is that like to, to hear the word traitor at the same time you hear the word hero from other people? Yeah, you know, I think that it's always the case that if you are adversarial to the U.S. government, there are certain people who view criticizing the government or exposing bad acts that are done in secret of the government as, as being treasonous. If you go back and look at what was said about one of my political heroes, Daniel Ellsberg, um, who everybody now regards as a hero, but 40 years ago you had the Mike Rogers and James Clappers of that era calling him a Russian spy and a traitor and engaging in treason and endangering the United States. It's really just a, a very similar pattern. And I knew a long time ago when I went into journalism that it wasn't the profession to go into if you want to be universal, universally loved. If you do it the right way, it means that you're going to make a lot of powerful people and their loyalists unhappy. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Then I hope to see you here in New York in a couple of months. Thanks very much, Brian. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here.